Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, September 11th, 2024 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, it's Patch Tuesday, so we have to start with Microsoft's patches. We received patches for 79 different vulnerabilities. Four of them had already been exploited, so commonly referred to as zero days, and seven of the vulnerabilities were rated critical. The first already exploited vulnerability is a vulnerability in Microsoft Publisher. It allows a security feature bypass. Essentially, an attacker could trick you into launching macros, even if they would be prohibited by macro policies. Next, we do have a Microsoft Windows Update Remote Code Execution Vulnerability. This is a little bit tricky. It's actually not that uh, Microsoft Windows Update has the Remote Code Execution Vulnerability. Instead, it enables Remote Code Execution Vulnerabilities by allowing downgrades. Now, on the good side, this issue, first of all, only applies to optional components that you installed, and it only applies to Windows 10 version 1507 as the name implies, released in 2015 and no longer supported, at least the mainstream version. There is also an enterprise version that is in long time support. And that's probably why you're seeing this vulnerability being addressed at all. And we also have a approach escalation vulnerability in Windows installer that would allow an attacker to gain system privileges. These vulnerabilities are actually somewhat common because installers do need some elevated privileges at time. So that's probably where this comes from. And then finally, the fourth already exploited vulnerability is a Windows mark of the web security feature bypass. This issue was already publicly disclosed and apparently exploited since 2018. Last month, uh, that's when a researcher, Joe uh, that Simeon, I believe the name is pronounced from Elastic Security, it did publish uh, details about this vulnerability. It's one of those uh, link bombing vulnerabilities where you have a number of different link files that basically confuse the system as to which file is actually being opened. In addition, there are a couple interesting vulnerabilities that are not zero days. For example, four different remote code execution vulnerabilities in SharePoint, they do have a relatively low CVSS score, indicating that in order to exploit them, well, you need to already have some access to the SharePoint server. Also, a critical vulnerability in Windows NAT. Of course, NAT is not enabled by default. Network address translation, that's something that you have to enable in Windows. Don't think it's really used that much in Windows, but maybe in small businesses as such, you may use Windows sort of as a gateway router. And then, of course, NAT may be enabled. Also interesting, a vulnerability that affects Microsoft Outlook only for iOS. And uh, this is an information disclosure vulnerability. Now, in addition to the NAT vulnerability, there are also two remote code execution vulnerabilities that are just labeled as TCP IP stack. However, they also require the net NAT service to be configured. And that's, of course, a non-default configurations. In addition, Microsoft states that exploitation of this vulnerability would be highly unlikely. So quick summary here, apply the patch, nothing I think outrageous that you need to apply tomorrow or even before the weekend. Just follow your standard of vulnerability management procedure. And Adobe didn't disappoint. They also provided us uh, with updates uh, for eight different uh, products. Of interest is a vulnerability in Cold Fusion with a CFSS score of 9.8. It's a deserialization vulnerability that could lead to arbitrary code execution. We also have 
updates for Acrobat, Acrobat Reader. The highest uh, score here is 8.6. Also, arbitrary code execution, access of resource using incompatible type or a type confusion vulnerability. There's also a use after free vulnerability, but uh, it only got a CVSS score of 7.8. Ivanti also came out with a number of updates for its endpoint management software as well as for workspace control and cloud service appliance. The one that's noteworthy here is that the endpoint management software received a fix for a deserialization vulnerability that could provide an unauthenticated user with access to the EPM core server. And I mentioned it uh, earlier this week, but tomorrow there will likely be no podcast. Uh, I'll be uh, traveling overseas, and uh, unless I happen to find a quiet place to record, we'll probably not be able uh, to record a podcast. That's it for today. Thanks for listening. Thanks for liking and recommending this podcast. Talk to you again on Friday. Bye.